It's time for 41 is the Mike, a weekly Chiefs podcast with Nick Jacobs of KSHB 41 and Matt Derrick of Chiefs Digest. 41 is the Mike starts now. Welcome, everyone, to a very special edition of 41 is the Mike, a late night edition with myself, Matt Derrick, and Nick Jacobs from KSHB 41. Nick, um, our once again scheduling enthusiast, even though you were the scheduling enthusiast on Sunday as well, Mm -hmm. I'm overloaded with scheduling, so you're going to be the schedule enthusiast again tonight. That's fine, Matt. I I enjoy a schedule. I enjoy when it's not scheduled for Christmas, but you know what? (laughs) Life happens sometimes. That's what happens when the Chiefs have a lot of success. You noted this uh, earlier today. i got to give you credit for it. Um, Chiefs are playing every single day of the week, except on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It's pretty impressive. How do you pull that off? What? Tweeting that? (laughs) (laughs) The Chiefs Chiefs ending up on six six days of the... I mean, the the NFL has never scheduled a game on Wednesday, so of course the first time they do it, the Chiefs are scheduled on a Wednesday. No, I thought you were asking about the tweets. Like, well, Matt, you just try to put one letter in front of the other and hope it's <laughs> Oh, I know, how you, come up with, I know how you come up with the brilliant tweets. There's no doubt about that. There's no off about, on the genius switch for Nick Jacobs. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Let's not get reckless with our words, sir. It's very kind of you. But, I, you know, I'm not very good at math and other things. So I'll humble myself. Don't worry. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, that's, yes. Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs are the number one storyline headed into this year. Every week you were going to hear, can they three peat? Can they can they three peat? Can they three peat? Can they three peat? That is going to be the number one storyline you're going to hear in every single football game. You're going to hear about is Travis Kelsey too old? Is the Chiefs dynasty over? That's how they get the that's how they get non-Chiefs fans in to watch the game. Is everybody wants to see the empire crumble <laughs> and or you know the dynasty crumble. So that is going to be the storyline. Can this team be the one that 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 does it. Is that the team that does it? The Chiefs don't look the same this week. The Chiefs don't look the same the next week. But they'll always forget that they that stretch in December. They're like, yeah, they don't look the same because they're playing three games in ten days. So yeah, that may happen. So you know, I mean, yeah, it, 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 I mean, it's you know, it, it'll be a Jeopardy question someday, and you know, we'll all. <laughs> this team played six days, <laughs> six different days during the season. Who are the Kansas City Chiefs? Or what is the Kansas City Chiefs? Um, And, uh, I mean, if the NFL can figure out a way to get them on the Tuesday, I mean, I'm sure it would would have happened. I mean, I I can't imagine they probably didn't call out to somebody, some streamer out there to see if they were interested in the Tuesday package and try to get the Chiefs on it. Uh, Because they seem to find every possible streaming network that they could for this schedule. We get Netflix on it. There's another one. I mean, not only is the NFL playing on Wednesday and the Chiefs are on it, Netflix is new to the family for the first time. <laughs> the Chiefs are going to be on Netflix. Yeah, and if you listen to a couple of our past podcasts, we were hitting about this. I hinted about that uh, the Black Friday game, <laughs> multiple podcasts. Wasn't by accident. Um, and then, you know, I talked about that Niners game be, potentially being 325. Unfortunately, neither of us got the home opener right like we wanted. Um, but... Man, I'm telling you, I just kept watching to see this morning on the international game. I was like, dude, I, I, Matt, I, I was like, I think Matt's going to be right about that international Panthers game. And then they picked who they did. And I'm like, boy, they should have gone with Matt's plan. <laughs> yeah, I started feeling a little rough on Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening when I saw the rumors that the Giants were headed to that game in the Car- for against the Carolina Panthers in Germany. And you're right. I mean, that game is going to set football back in Europe 20 years. I mean, nobody cares about either one of those teams in Europe. Nobody knows who the Panthers are. I mean, they might vaguely have an idea who the Giants are. I mean, I know they are marketing over there, but I think also you saw last year the NFL talking about the the, the people in, Ger- in, in Germany and the Frankfurt for the Chiefs game. Had no idea who the Dolphins were. They're, that's not who the team is. But if you're the Chiefs, you're glad not to be going to Germany in November because once you get to Thanksgiving, I mean, the Chiefs' schedule is just a month of crazy nonsense on every single network and every single time slot and Christmas Day and Hallelujah. I mean, it is all over the place, Nick. So I don't think the Chiefs would have wanted to shoehorn a trip into Germany in there. Well, and here's the kicker. Had they gone to Germany... The, I think they would have got the bye week right after. So it would have been they further back this year. So I think that's the only the only benefit if that had been the case is they would have got the bye week right out of the Germany game 
which would have been more in par with um, what what they're typically used to. That is. This, is the, this is the earliest bye week Patrick Mahomes is going to have during his tenure as a starting quarterback. And nobody likes a, a week six bye week. I mean, no. if you're the players, that's the first thing you look at is the bye week. And I can't right. imagine anybody in that locker room looking at week six and saying, yay, great, we get a week six bye week. Yeah, if you, this is honestly, if I was in, in the NFLPA down the road, I would have it worked in to where every NFL team gets a bye week between week eight through 13. Especially if they go to 18 games, that, that honestly, that has to be, if I were them, that would be one of the things I'd force in there. It's like every single NFL team has to have a bye week within the first bye week within, if you want to make it week eight through 12 or whatever, and then they get a second one, you know, wherever in that stretch of the season between, you know, in, in December somewhere. I mean, Chiefs, you know, granted, I mean, there's always a chance for a, a, a bye week in the playoffs. And if they go to the Super Bowl, there's obviously the Super Bowl bye week. But you'd still be looking at maybe if you're the worst case scenario for the Chiefs, what? The possibility of 16 games and 17 weeks after the bye week? I mean... That's pretty brutal schedule in today's modern age of the NFL. That's about as worse as it can get. Yeah, I. This is. Uh, I feel like I say this every year, but no, they. <laughs> there's a lot going off the schedule that the Chiefs are going to need their health more than ever this year. Yeah, I'm. I, I, I kind of want to know what what are your feelings. I mean, what are what are the things that stand out the most about this schedule? Because one thing you said that absolutely resonated to me, which is that this schedule is built to highlight the Chiefs' run for a three peat, mm-hmm. because it starts off out of the box with big games. Um, you know, even that since even the Cincinnati game is going to essentially be a de facto nationally televised game at three twenty five. The Falcons game is going to be in prime time. Chargers game is going to be mostly a 325 game is going to be mostly a national game. I mean, first five games of the season before the bye week, Nick, I mean, almost other than one of those games is probably going to be a 90% of the nation plus. Yeah. What I, what I think they did, um, you're starting out with the Ravens Monday night, or not Monday night, on Thursday night on, on KSHB 41 and NBC for anybody that's not in the Kansas City market. And that Ravens game... Kind of, kind of the biggest part of that is that really kind of like you and I talked about on the Q and A. That's going to showcase the rest of what they're doing that weekend. Like, what's the Friday game on Peacock, and then what's going to be on Sunday night? What's going to be on, you know, with Tony Romo doing his first game on Fox and the three twenty five between the Browns and the Cowboys, and then the Monday night football game. So, I mean, each one of those, they're going to use the Chiefs Ravens platform to build that up and to kind of really kind of showcase that. And for them to kind of put this game up as quickly as they did in week one kind of really tells me that the NFL has certain aspirations um, that they want to hit, in my opinion, with that Peacock game and the Brazil game that they really, really are after. And so I think that's why they wanted to springboard that to get fans jolted for that. And then, all right, that was, yeah, football's back. All right, now we got the... Packers, Eagles, they were both in the playoffs last year. Let's see that. Yeah. And then, you know, and then just kind of get people amped up and really get them back into not only fantasy football, but maybe, you know, if somebody places some bids, I'm just going to call it that (laughs) Um, because I don't know if I can or can't say the technical term. Um, And then, you know, and then, you know, between that and fantasy football and NFL Sunday ticket and all that, just try to get fans really amped up with the NFL being back. And I, I think that's what that week does. Really does. And, you know, and once I look at it, you know, more and more, I mean, the Chiefs don't have a normal game until week 10. I mean, that's really, I mean, that's the first noon game of the entire season on a Sunday. It's week 10. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything else before that, I mean, it's either a primetime game or it's one of these late Sunday games. Like, once again, the 49ers game is going to be a nationally televised game. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's not primetime, but... As we've talked about, you know, that's the highest viewed window of the NFL weekly schedule. Right. And the Chiefs have four games in that window in uh, the first 10 weeks of the season, nine weeks of the season. And that 49ers game is probably going to do 40 to 50 million people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, you're, you're not wrong. Because, like, 
like what I took away from them having the Bengals in week two was okay. They want to get Joe Burrow. They, they know Joe Burrow's still going to be. They assume he's still going to be healthy then. So they really want to get that game in and get max before the Bengals' offensive line gets him because, gets killed. Yes. yes, because they got burned last year by putting it as late as they did, and they're like, "Yeah, we're not doing that again." No, nope, we're putting that up front there. We're getting Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes to ramp up the month of September. We're not we're not going to play around on that again. What actually did surprise me in terms of the schedule was how much they used the Chiefs to uplift the NFC South. So where you have the Falcons on a Sunday night, you've got the Saints on Monday night, and then you got the Bucks on Monday night. But when you go in and you kind of start to look at the TV markets and everything, it starts to make a lot more sense to where they know they can go get those. They, they know Mahomes and the Chiefs are going to be the draw. They know they get that without a problem. But what they're trying to get, added bonus on top of it, is when you get Atlanta, that's the eighth TV market in the country. When you get Tampa, that's the 13th market in the country. So you're trying to add in those markets that maybe don't typically perform well and try to get those in the top 10. New Orleans, on the other hand, look, New Orleans is normally in the top 10 of any Sunday night football game, but the fact they're going to have their own Saints in it and it's going to be on the road where they typically aren't going to be, like that... They they were trying to make sure, in my opinion, that every single partner got a a good number to be able to use from a rating perspective, if that makes sense. So I think that's why the NFC South got featured so prominently. They made Kirk, they made sure Kirk Cousins is early enough to where you build that storyline between Mahomes and Cousins. The quarterbacks on the Netflix, we'll see that a whole bunch that week. And then you get into, you know, him being fe- featured on Sunday night against the defending Super Bowl champions. And then you have that storyline. So I, I feel like they were really trying to, especially with the Chiefs, they wanted this is a storyline they built AFC Championship rematch, previous AFC Championship rematch, and team uh, that can beat the Chiefs and with Joe Burrow multiple times. Can they take down the back to back Super Bowl champions in week two? Week three, Kirk Cousins. Um, now that he's in Atlanta, are the Falcons for real or not? We find out against the defending Super Bowl champions. And then in week four, Harbaugh's debut in LA against the Chiefs, the team that he's trying to beat to win the AFC West. In the month of September, they've already built the storylines that they want to sell and try to kind of show who of those four teams can take down the almighty Chiefs. Yes, I I agree. I mean, it, it's in that sense, the, the the part about the NFC South, especially, is really in, intriguing to me, um, is, especially since, I mean, the Chiefs are going to be done with the NFC South pretty early. I mean, the last game is the one against Carolina in, what, week 12? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're going to be... I mean, a good chunk of the Chiefs' schedule is in the NFC in the first half of the season. Um, so, I mean, it's very backloaded with AFC games. I mean, that's the way that I think it should be, and it's for the best. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I was a bit surprised about was that, you know, teams can be scheduled in prime time six times. And mm-hmm. surprisingly, the Chiefs don't have six prime time games. They only have uh-huh. five. But at the same time, they have eight nationally televised games outside of these, you know, the 325 window that we've been talking about, because they do. They have the Friday, Black Friday game, and then they're going to have the Saturday, Christmas, Wednesday special of two games that are, are, are of their own. So in essence, I mean, they have eight nationally televised games before you even get to the whole 325 games and, and those popularities. Um what do you make of all of that? I mean, especially, you know, that, hey, the NFL, I guess, gave the Chiefs a break to a degree as far as um, not having a Thursday night game, although the 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 one commitment that the Chiefs have to be on Amazon for the Thursday night package, they're fulfilling with their Friday, Black Friday game against the Raiders. Yeah, um, I think, like you and I talked about, uh, Kim Ross, the Q&A or Sunday podcast, those blend together for me anymore. Um but like you remember the thing you and I discussed, I wonder if Amazon would be okay with having the Chiefs on Black Friday versus them having them on a traditional Thursday. We got our answer with the schedule. Yes, yep. they will take them on Black Friday to drive traffic to Amazon to get you to buy Christmas gifts. 
So like, yes, they will, they will hundred percent do that. And they have no problem doing that. And the fact they do it against the Raiders who they were trying to make that the game last year, they get to kind of get to have that one. And, and the storyline you get to put there, it'll be used earlier in the year on October 27th, but you'll be able to use it there. Um, depending on how the October 27th game goes is has Antonio Pierce turned this team into the tough football team that can, what, however he talked about the cutting the head off the snake and how he hyped all that up. That's going to be used relentlessly on October 27th. And if they can't back it up, it's going to be used relentlessly again. <laughs> Um, in in the the Black Friday game, there's um, two other things before we start kind of going through the the, the games breakdown uh, each one individually yeah. and look at some of the unique characteristics of them. Um, but one because we talked about um, on the on the pod on Sunday about you know the NFL's desire to make sure that all their partners get games and that they yeah. get what they want. Um, really surprising to me that one Fox only gets one game that they got the 49ers game surprised that they don't have a second game on, on the schedule. I mean, that's, that's a little odd. I mean, it does make me wonder if there's, if the, if the NFL gets an opportunity later to flex a game to Fox, whether they're going to be in line to get maybe an extra chiefs game, because it certainly feels like they might be owed one. Um, and I mean, KSHB Nick got, gets four games. That's pretty um, cool. Well, right now, let me let me pop that up and take a look. Um, because I know we get the let me double check. Yeah, because I know we get the yeah, we have the we will 41 will have the opener against the Ravens, have the Falcons on Sunday night football, have the uh, Chargers, Chargers on Sunday, on Sunday night. night football in early December. And, and the and Texans then, on a Saturday. Yeah, Wednesday, yeah, the, Saturday. From that announcement the other day, or Wednesday, or so whatever, I can't even keep track. It is no, yeah, it's yes, a Texans Saturday. Yeah, so yeah, no, I mean that's gonna and that's gonna be a big game for NBC to have the Texans and Chiefs at noon on that day. Like that'll be big, and I'm curious to see where college football is gonna schedule their games around those times. That'll be interesting in a, in and of itself. But yeah, I mean for now that's what KSHB will have. We'll see what happens down the road because um, you never know with flexing and you know other things what what may happen. So. Yeah, no, I was, um, I don't know. It's it's really interesting. I, I was just, I guess my thing is, after getting to hear Michael North's thought process over the past couple of years and kind of the scheduling process, and that's why I'm excited when we get to chat with Charlotte and kind of get her, they get another person's yeah. thought process from the scheduling thing. Just kind of what all they think of logistically that we never, that I never would have before, like I did when I've been, I've been explaining Amazon or what storylines you're trying to really create in the first handful of weeks and just kind of go from there. But yeah, it, um, I'm happy with where they put the bills though, because it made it before Thanksgiving, but it made it right smack dab in the middle of the year to where there's enough distance. And Travis Kelsey talked about this on new heights. There's enough distance for the most part between the Ravens, Bengals and 49ers and bills games from when the Chiefs may play them in the playoffs. There's enough distance in between to where teams can approve, teams can be different, and it's not going to be the same game like it would be when hypothetically the Chiefs played the Steelers a couple years ago during the, you know when they had all the COVID stuff going on, and yeah. then they played the Steelers just a couple weeks later, you know, in the wild card round. Yep. Then one more thing before we get into the rest of this, because yeah, yeah. I, uh, I wanted to talk about you. You mentioned flex scheduling, and I did want to mm -hmm. touch on that because, um, for instance, on Monday Night Football, any game can be flexed between weeks twelve and seventeen. Well, the Chiefs aren't on Monday Night Football in that range. Um, some Thursday night games can be flexed between weeks thirteen and seventeen. Chiefs don't have any Thursday night games in that. The, the Amazon Black Friday game obviously can't be flexed, so that's not going anywhere. Right. Um, and really, I mean, in that window for Monday night football late in the season where any game can be flexed, the only game that the Chiefs have that really would be an option to be flexed into primetime would be the Carolina game in Week 12 because everything else in that window 
uh, Raiders can't be flexed. Uh, Chargers could be flexed out of December 8th if the Chargers are terrible or something. Um, and then, uh, like you know, the the 15th game, that Saturday game against the Browns, is not cannot be flexed. It's set for Saturday. can't be changed. So, well, I do wonder, though, if that could be. the Browns game, I guess. I guess the Browns game could be flexed, but I think it would be very unlikely that they would flex it, considering that's the first game that sets up that 10-day window of – three games and craziness for the chiefs. I don't, I don't think they would, they would flex that one. But if they did, I could see it going to Sunday night football, potentially. Uh, that's the only thing. They certainly wouldn't move that to a Monday night. So N- they shouldn't. No, no. Cause um, then that becomes a competitive disadvantage from the other ones. Cause if you actually go look at the other teams, they actually tried to make them all very evenly to where they had 10 days each. I, I was actually really impressed with the fact that, they did their best to try to get each team to have that 10 days, similar 10 day stretch. Yeah. And really the only other option, I mean, you know, you've got Sunday night football and it can be flexed between weeks five and 10, which the chiefs don't have any games in that window. The only other thing that they've got is that you, you can do Monday night football can be flexed twice. Uh, or, you know, excuse me, I can't be, it can't be, that's not the one that can be flexed. I was looking at the, the, the Sunday night, Sunday night can be flexed later in the season. But again, I mean, that would be like the Chargers game, what we're talking about. Um, really, I mean, the only likelihood of possibility of anything that uh, there's really not anything that could be flexed. I mean, um, there's very limited options here. I mean, the chief schedule probably is what it is. And some of that's because they're in so many windows that can't be moved around like these Friday, Saturday, <laughs> Wednesday windows can't be changed. Um, you're not going to flex anything early in the season, obviously. And then, you know, they're just in a couple of spots where, you know, either flexing is not an option or it's going to be very, very difficult. Um, there's only maybe like we talked about that Carolina game that could be flexed in the chargers game. It could be flexed out. Um, um, I think the Broncos game, obviously, if the Broncos are eight and one or something of that nature, maybe that game gets flexed into a prime time spot. But it's hard to see. I mean, it's hard to see a lot of the Chiefs movement, but we you never know. I mean, you don't know how the schedule is going to play out and where everybody could end up. Um, let's just go. Let's run through the schedule, Nick, and kind of just talk about what stands out to us about this. Okay. Obviously, we've talked a lot about week one yep. <laughs> because we've known the Ravens game for a while. Yeah. Um, anything that we haven't really exhausted on that one yet? No, I mean, the only thing I talked about in the Q&A yesterday was that it's going to be interesting with the Ravens losing their D-line coach, Anthony Weaver, and a defensive coordinator, um, McDonald, to the Seahawks. What type of defense do they have early on in the season? What's different from what they've run before? And congratulations to the defense coordinator, Zach Orr, I know he's played in the league, but your first ever coordinator gig, you're having to go up against Andy Reid's offense for week one. You know, your first time being the DC and you're like, hey, I get to go against Andy Reid week one. Doesn't mean John Harbaugh won't be able to tell him stuff and look for this and look for that. But still, at the end of the day, like that's that's I, I don't envy him in week one having to go against the Chiefs offense and Patrick Mahomes as his first ever time calling games himself. No, that that is going to be a difficult challenge. And I mean, it is one of the things I do, you know, I think is going to be interesting about this game, considering these were the top two scoring defenses in the league last year. You know, hey, if these two defenses are on their game, are we going to end up with a 13 to 10 contest? I don't know if that's the greatest kickoff to the NFL season. Uh, a close game, obviously, would you hopefully be entertaining. But I mean, the NFL is all about offense. Don't they want this game to be like 38, 35 or something? It might be. I mean, the thing, the two things I think we're going to find out is did this Ravens defense skip a beat? And how good is the Chiefs' run defense against the Ravens' offense? Not only with Derrick Henry, but that entire running back group that they've got in that O line. So Steve Spagnuolo and his tackling drills for training camp and how the Chiefs approach that, that's going to be big. And that game, I'll, I'll, I won't spoil it, but that game is going to set up another one uh, that we'll talk about in a minute. Oh, I can't wait. Um, obviously, Chiefs have a mini buy after that. They get 10 yeah. days to prepare for Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. And I guess the, one of the big questions is going to be, Joe Burrow going to have T. Higgins? That, 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 that will... I hadn't thought of that till now, but you're 100% right, Matt. That's going to be a big question mark in terms of how that offense performs. They really will. 
If they have T. Higgins available, what's it like with uh, Zach Painter calling plays since Brian Callahan will be down in in you know in Tennessee Titans uh, yep. country land as the head coach down there, and not having Tyler Boyd as the three anymore? Yeah, no, that's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting to see what type of offense they have because Steve Spagnuolo he ain't gonna play around that game, that's for sure. No, and it only it only makes me think about you know what T Higgins' status could be because obviously you know Chris Jones had to hold out and didn't come back until week two. I mean, if T Higgins steals a play from the the Chris Jones playbook, it might be his first game of the season. It might be his first action of the entire season. Yeah, could be. All right, then a week later on Sunday Night Football, Chiefs at the Falcons will be Kirk Kirk Cousins will be Michael Penix. I don't I mean, know what the Falcons are doing. We'll see, but I mean, the thing I got with the Falcons, I just, I just don't think that's for me. That's not a very appetizing game. It's not a game like, oh, I can't wait to see it. I know Aaron Ladd at uh, KCSB Forty One, one of my coworkers, will be happy to see. It. He's, you know, he's from Atlanta, and Falcons are his team. Um, but yeah, no, I. The problem. You're just not. You're not dying for Kirk Cousins and Patrick Mahomes. No, it's not that. It's that the Falcons don't have a pass rush. <laughs> No. Like they didn't, they didn't invest in a, a quality. Yes, but like they didn't invest in a good pass rush. So like I, I just feel like Mahomes is going to torch them. I don't disagree. I mean, I, uh, I mean, and that is a game that I would circle as maybe being a game to watch out for because if the Chiefs were going to turn in one of their Indianapolis Colts kind of on the road stumbles, I mean that's a game to circle because it's coming off obviously two tough contests against Baltimore and Cincinnati, and then you've got. Harbaugh, the first one, since you got three games against Harbaugh's this year. This is the first one against uh, Jim, but your second Harbaugh of the season, mm-hmm. week four at the Chargers. Yeah, and that one, that's where I think whatever happens in week one is going to play a lot into week four. What John does, how physical he is, what he does play action-wise, Jim's going to going to pay attention to a lot of that and kind of see how they operate and how they work about that. And I just, I think a lot of... I think the Chiefs are going to have to show things in week one they don't plan on using in week four. And so that they can kind of throw Jim some curveballs that he isn't expecting. But how their run defense performs in week one and week two is going to tell them a lot about how week four is going to go against the Chargers. Yeah. And and knowing Andy Reid, maybe there's going to be a few things he wants to show them in week one. So when he shows them the same look and he does something different in week four... Just yes. cross ship a little bit. Yep. Um, week five, last game before the bye week, obviously a, a significant date. I think we all know because Chiefs Saints, October 7th, not only my birthday, but birthday of a lot of many famous people, Vladimir Putin, for example, and Chase Daniel. So huh. it's a very diverse group of people that I share a yeah. birthday with. That's 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 a big day, Matt. How are you going to? How are you going to celebrate in the breast box? <laughs> uh, probably with chicken fingers at halftime. So well, at least you've got it all planned out, man. That's half the battle. I will also probably uh, celebrate my birthday by watching some Derek Carr football that night. Man, there's nothing appetizing about that Saints game. I'm sorry. <laughs> like when I saw, I was like, really the Saints? I was like, out of all the games they could have picked for Monday night, that was that was the one. I was like, all right, well, I guess they'll get the market at least, you know, because the Saints always do well on Sunday night football, and New Orleans seems to always be in the top ten of Sunday night. I was like, well, they'll do well on Monday, but I was like. I'm sorry. There's nothing about that game that makes me go, you know what? That's going to be a game right there. That's going to be a fun game. To There's just not a lot of storylines from it. Other no, than I mean, the biggest one. Yeah, no, go ahead. I think you're going to say what I think you're going to say. I'm going to say, well, I'm sure we're talking, thinking the same thing, is that Chiefs play in New Orleans, and they plan on finishing the season in New Orleans. Oh, the only other thing I was going to say is the return of Tyron Matthew. Well, there you go. That, that is was, true. That's going to be the one storyline from that. i to think about that, yes. And, and Colin Saunders. <laughs> There will be a couple of uh, homecoming games. The the Tyron Matthew revenge game for sure. Yeah. Um, got the bye week, obviously week six that we're all very very excited about. Yeah. But then you got it, the big one, and hey, you are coming off the bye. San Francisco 49ers are coming off a mini bye, so they'll have a ten day break yeah. between games. Whereas the Chiefs will have thirteen since they're playing the Monday night game. So it's a little bit of a rest advantage for the Chiefs, but this is the big one. I mean, it's the rematch, maybe a preview 
another Super Bowl down the road, Nick. You never know. I mean, this is going to be the Battle of Titans. I mean, this should be the game that's probably the most watched game in the NFL this year. Chiefs at the San Francisco 49ers. It'll definitely, yeah, it'll definitely be up there because um, I the week before they're playing in Seattle, so like that'll what McDonald does against them defensively. I'm going to be really intrigued to see whenever I'll be watching that on coaches' film in October. Um, that'll be something I'll I'll be really intrigued. And then they'll have the Cowboys the following week after the Chiefs. So between those two, yeah, I'm uh. I just, I just think the Niners are really going to want this game. Yeah, I just think there's going to be a lot of guys there that feel like they left a lot on the field, and like they're. I just think the motivation is going to be different to where the Chiefs are trying to, you know, the Chiefs are trying to win the marathon, and I think the Niners are going to be more of a sprint mentality at that point. My big question for that game is just going to be how much of a sideshow will Tom Brady in the booth be? Yeah, I don't know because I mean, he might have to uh, uh, answer for for some of his jokes at the roast, Nick. I mean, well, the, the biggest thing I can already see in the broadcast is they're going to have Tom Brady dressed up as a Niners jersey as a kid and being a Joe Montana fan, and Tom's right. returning home to the California area, and Tom, Tom Brady, hey, you're calling this game? Like, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how much Fox wants to lean into that part of it. Because they're going to have so much Super Bowl content from these two playing in two different Super Bowls. And gee, do you think we'll we'll see uh, Tom and Patriots highlights of against the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game? Just to Maybe. stick in the Chiefs fans' crawl? Not necessarily stick in the Chiefs fans' crawl, but to really talk about what he saw from Mahomes. This is going to be his first time breaking down Patrick Mahomes as a broadcaster. They should certainly th- uh, show the interception, at least, that Traveris Ward had that should have stood up but had somebody not lined up off sides and they should absolutely show you know chris jones not committing pass interference or uh, not committing a quarterback uh, roughing the passer matt Tom, but you know what uh, you know what i'm gonna remind you of though <laughs> what's that butterfly effect if those things don't happen bob Sutton may still be the dc and you're not talking about a three-peat this year that is absolutely true so butterfly knock effect. on wood we will we'll we'll move on um, I'm just after saying. that. After that, Chiefs kind of have a normal week. Um, go, getting ready to go to the Raiders, and uh, going to be the first time facing the Raiders since that Christmas Day debacle last year, Nick. And I have a feeling there's going to be a few guys on that team that are going to want to uh, exact a little bit of revenge. Yeah, you're just going to have to play Antonio Pierce's comments over and over again, and then that'll be done. Yeah, uh, I mean. Uh, let me look up because I was looking at the Raiders earlier today when I was writing an article for Web. Here's what they actually have, in, in, kind of in between the Chiefs. They they will play the Steelers and Rams before they play the Chiefs, so they will know where they're at physical toughness wise by the time they get to the Chiefs. Then after the Chiefs, they got the Bengals. That's a tough stretch. That's a tough mm-hmm. stretch for the Raiders. Mm-hmm. So that could, I mean, they could certainly be. Have lost a couple of games heading into that stretch right there. And mm-hmm. if their season's not over, it could very well be over after that. <laughs> Anything's possible. <laughs> uh then Chiefs get back on the the Monday night football train the following week, opening up November 4th. And this will be Nick's the just the second game in 51 days at Arrowhead. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, just the quirk of the schedule with the bye week, and obviously with Kansas football too, which we're going to talk about in a second. But um, Chiefs that uh, October seventh game against the Saints. It'll have been fifty days since the last time that the Chiefs you know played at Arrowhead, other than that Saints game. So um, I feel bad for Chiefs fans because September, late September, and all of October is the best time to go to Arrowhead weather wise, and you're going to have one game. Um, but November 4th, the Buccaneers, Monday Night Football, Baker Mayfield, Texas Tech, reunion with Patrick Mahomes. What more could you ask for? Yeah, that's that. Uh, I agree with you. That will probably be the primary storyline just Baker Mayfield and Mahomes and what they did last time they played in college and what they did when they played in that, uh, in the divisional round where Mahomes left the game. That'll be another part of what they'll, of what they'll put in there about. And even though there's almost no one other than maybe Mike Evans on the team since 
Tampa Bay won the Super Bowl and Super Bowl 55. I'm sure there'll be some mentions of that as well. Yeah, there'll be a couple a couple players on defense. Antonio Winfield. There's, there's a couple of defensive players left. That is true. Mm-hmm. And Antonio Winfield is a good player. Mm-hmm. So do not step on that man's cape. Uh, next week, Denver Broncos at noon. And we were talking about this a little bit before we were recording because I think it's going to be most notable for this game for me is going to be what kind of feel shape the field is in because the day before KU will be playing Iowa State in one of their four games that they're holding at Arrowhead this year. It's the only time that the Chiefs and, and KU are playing back to back. So... That is going to be notable to me because that field could be, I mean, Travis Hogan and his crew is an absolutely amazing group, but I don't know how you manage to get a football field like the grass at Arrowhead in decent shape after a college football game has been played on it 24 hours before. Yeah, I don't know what type of action plan they got, but props to them for whatever they're able to get done, man. That's not, that's not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy, and I guess we'll see what kind of teams the Broncos have. We'll see who's playing the quarterback at that point for Sean Payton. I mean, the Broncos season could go a lot of different ways. It is a choose-your-own-adventure, isn't it, Nick? Yeah, I mean, like, I I think the Broncos will give the Chiefs a game no matter what. I'll be curious to see where Bo Nix is at at that point in the season, if he's starting and playing, what he's doing. Um, And, yeah, I mean, like, I just, I think Payton's going to give them a game like he, he like he did last year. I just I think Peyton is one of those guys that is always going no matter the talent he has on his roster, I think he's always gonna find a way to be able to hang with Andy Reid in from a game planning and play calling perspective. There's probably no one in the league that knows Andy Reid better than Sean Peyton because he agree. studies him closely, he watches him closely. So I mean that's what I, I think definitely makes it an interesting game because Sean Payton absolutely respects the heck out of Andy Reid. I know that goes both ways. So mm-hmm. um, those two guys want to beat each other. So, I mean, it's, it gets personal when these, these two guys get together. So mm-hmm. um, next, the following week, week 11, we've got the chiefs heading to Buffalo, Nick, and this is going to be another, another tough one. It begins to really a stretch for me that um, because the chiefs, you know, obviously it gets cold at Arrowhead. The Chiefs might not have a decent weather game the rest of the season after week 11. <laughs> yeah, I... That game right there, you're getting... You're starting to get close to the holidays. And I just I just think the Bills, man, like, they're... That... For Sean McDermott and all them, I just think that that game, the way they lost, the way they feel like they were probably a Super Bowl squad... Like there's just going to be a lot of guys on that team that are really going to be gung ho about about using what they did that year to kind of really lock in that game. And the problem is between the Chiefs and Bills is like the Bills always treat the regular season like it's the test that decides if they're worthy enough to be a playoff team or to be a potential Super Bowl contender. But then like the Chiefs are like, no, we're not going to show you everything because we'll see you again in the playoffs and then we'll just beat you there. So like that's just kind of the I just I just feel like the organizations are always in two different spots right now. And I just think the Bills continually take the wrong approach. The the regular season game always means more to Buffalo than it does to the Chiefs. And the postseason game always means more to the Chiefs than it does to Buffalo. Yeah. And and this game is gonna, I mean, I'd be more difficult for Buffalo because honestly, I mean, they don't have the firepower that they've had. They have lost a lot of talent off this team. They still have Josh Allen and Josh Allen, I think is going to have to single-handedly drag this team along. But I mean, they've obviously have to rebuild his wide receiver room, lost Gabe Davis. He's losing Stefan Diggs. I mean, it's going to be a whole new group of receivers that he's working with. Matt, don't worry about it. They got Marquez Valdez Scantlin now. They do. And he is a heck of a run blocker. So uh, they'll 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 be be okay. They got him. Uh, the back-to-back road games, and this is another one. That's uh, this is probably the one game that I talked about Atlanta, but this is the other one for me that is the potential trap game that shouldn't be a trap game because the Chiefs are significantly better than the Carolina Panthers. Carolina Panthers will probably be terrible this year, so the Chiefs should be able to win this game with a C effort. I mean, maybe even with a D effort. Who knows? Yeah, no, the Panthers are awful. I'm just telling you, like they don't. I'm not saying I'm not saying take them lightly, 
But I'm also saying like you just giving good effort is going to get you a comfortable win against them right now. We'll see what I mean on paper. We'll see what happens when the regular season starts and everything. But I just I think Steve Spagnuolo is gonna have a fun time against Price. Yeah, that's gonna be kind of cruel to see. But I think you're right. I think you, oh, you can't you have... see over your offensive line. Well, look at this Chris Jones jumping up in the air. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> that could be a little rough. Um, th- okay, now when the schedule gets a little fun, Nick. I mean going to be a short week, but short week for everybody, but it's going to be a really short week for the Raiders who are going to be traveling on Thanksgiving mm-hmm. and coming to visit the Chiefs. I mean, now we've we've seen this rodeo before. I mean, I thought last year that Nick obviously that the Raiders were going to be absolutely desolate having to play on the road on Christmas Day. And instead, they they took that as a badge of honor. I mean, they took that as hey, if we're going to have to show up in Kansas City on Christmas Day, by golly, we're going to we're going to get our pound of flesh, and they did. Can they do it two years in a row, coming into Arrowhead and winning on Black Friday? Uh, I think that October twenty seventh game is going to answer a lot about where they feel like they are belief wise. But then after they play the Chiefs on October twenty seventh, they're at the Bengals. They get a bye week. Then they play the Dolphins and Broncos. So I mean, for for the Raiders, like the Chiefs, the the Bengals and Dolphins games are going to be big to show what adjustments they've made since the last time they played the Chiefs. So, I mean, between those three games, I think Chiefs will have a pretty good idea about how to attack them, how to get out of there with a win. And um, the <laughs> this is the funny part. For as much as, you know, you said about the N- the NFC South being the, the front part of the Chiefs schedule, they're the back part of the Raiders schedule. <laughs> After the Chiefs, it's Bucks, Falcons, Saints. <laughs> that is crazy. Sprinkling with Jaguars and Chargers. I mean, yeah, considering there's only five weeks left in the season and you got three games against the AFC South, um, could be an opportunity for the Raiders to get healthy. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. They got, might have a little bit of an easier run for it than maybe the Chiefs do because um, it's going to get a little little tricky. I mean, I I think the Chargers are going to be better this year than they were last year. I mean, yeah, I think I Carbaugh too. can make it a significant improvement with them in year one. Can they be a playoff team this year? I don't know, but I think they can challenge 500 and i think they can make a run for it and this game might be important to them nick yeah and the interesting part for the chargers ahead of, ahead of the chiefs they're gonna they'll be titans Bengals, ravens falcons then chiefs so like they're gonna have they're gonna have a pretty heavy dose of the uh afc north and then the rebuilding titans and then we'll see what the falcons are at <laughs> early <laughs> december at that point but i mean the chiefs will have a good beat on what Jim Harbaugh tried to do against them last time. And with that being an arrowhead and everything, as long as the chiefs are healthy, I, I think they, I think they'll be okay in that one. Then begins the, the 10 days of fun. Uh, the chiefs are going to play three the, ten, days. the 10 days of Christmas, <laughs> the 10 days of Christmas for the Kansas city chiefs. That is right. Very well done. Um, and last year, you know, we talked at the end of the season that the Chiefs had a rest deficit in the last six weeks of the season that was unlike any team had faced before. And the Chiefs struggled. I mean, there was no doubt they struggled at the back end of the season, and the rest deficit was probably a big part of it. This 10 games of nonsense, you would think, would be more of the same, but the reality of it is is that the way that the NFL structured the schedule, Chiefs are fortunate, and they're going to have four games the road in the season where they're going to be on the exact same rest of everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, it's they're going to have a full week because they're playing the chargers on a Sunday night. So it's a little bit, you know, of a couple hours difference with the Browns, but um, really the only, the only thing you can really say about it is that going at Cleveland is a bit of a challenge, but I don't know what Cleveland's going to be by this point in the season. Yeah. Um. I'll get in. I'll get into the next part after this that I'm kind of angling more on this. I just with the Browns, you're gonna have that theme with Travis Kelsey returning home. Yep, and kind of use that piece of that puzzle to really kind of sell that storyline. You don't know who the Browns' quarterback is gonna be at the time. You don't know who the Browns' record is gonna be at that time. You think their defense will still be pretty good? We'll see. But yeah, what sets up after that, I think, is kind of interesting. Well, six days after that, on Saturday, will be the Houston Texans at noon at Arrowhead, December 21st. That should be a very festive game, Nick. I mean, that's going to be the, the the Christmas game for the Chiefs at home. Yeah, here's here's the angle I'm going to go over with for you here. Um, I'm going to take the Texans first. 
So the Chiefs have the Browns, Texans, Steelers. Texans will have the Dolphins same time at noon. Then they play the Chiefs on noon Saturday. Then they have to play the the Ravens. That's that's quite the stretch. But they'll be coming off a bye week before the Dolphins. That's where I kind of would have wished. I, I kind of wish that they'd figured out a way for the four teams that are playing on Christmas to really kind of have that bye week in week 14. I thought I think that would have been pretty beneficial. And then I go to the Steelers. The Steelers have their bye week in week nine. So, you know, it is what it is. But the Steelers have Eagles, Ravens, then Chiefs. So, like, you know, like that, it'll be interesting to see who the Steelers quarterback is at that point. But they don't exactly have a cakewalk um, either for them. And then you take a look at Baltimore. Then Baltimore, what they did for them, yeah, they didn't. (laughs) They're at the Giants. Yeah. Um, Then they play. The Steelers and the on on that Saturday, and then the Texans on on Christmas. So what I do want to say though is I feel like they did their best for the most part to evenly match at least like you said with the rest deficit between all of them collectively. What's going to be what I'm going to be intrigued by is I feel like Houston Houston gets to play the Dolphins at home. So I I think they tried in that three game stretch. I think the NFL really tried to build the schedule to where they tried to make it as fair as possible, either in travel opponent and you know, what each the gauntlet, each four of those teams is going to go through with that Wednesday Christmas game. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, I, Hey, little the pick here and there, it'd be great for the chiefs if they were playing at home on the 15th, like the Texans are. Um, I mean, going to Cleveland's not a, a, for a noon game is not horribly stressful. I mean, it's certainly, Hey, the Texans will have a couple hours or more rest. Sure. And they'll have had the more recent buy. Maybe that's a benefit. Um, but yeah, I mean, the fact that, you know, in this little round robin on the, the Wednesday, Saturday game, Saturday, Wednesday games, I mean, it is. I mean, everybody's got one road game, one home game. They're going to be working on the same amount of rest. Uh, these are decent opponents, too. I mean, I think there, there's at least, you know, an even this to that you know i don't think it's not like a lopsided game game i mean these are all four playoff caliber teams no um the steelers are absolutely in that ballpark too i mean even though you'd probably say that um in theory the steelers are the fourth best team i think they're probably gonna be the third best team this year because i think the texans will have a little bit of a step back but that maybe that's i, I could be out the lunch on that one <laughs> but <to> watch. <laughs> But you're right. I mean, it, it sh- there shouldn't be a significant advantage for any one of these teams in these matchups as far as just whether it's travel or rest or anything of that nature. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm I'm just intrigued to see what the Texans are able to do this year because, I mean, with their schedule, it starts to pick up in week five where they'll, they'll play the Bills, then week seven they got the Packers. Then in week nine, they're at the Jets. We'll see on that one. Then week 10, they got the Lions. Then they're at the Cowboys uh, right before Thanksgiving around then. Then, I mean, they get their normal Titans, Jaguars, and then Dolphins and Chiefs. And then, oh, hey, by the way, you get the Ravens afterwards. So, yeah, I mean, that stretch for them after week five, it seems like every other week they, they've they got somebody in their way that would make them a wild card type of thing. And I'm a, I'm, Generally a believer in CJ Stroud. I think he's won me over. I think he is a quality young quarterback, but that team wasn't necessarily just a quarterback driven team last year. And now NFL defensive coordinators have a full season of tape on CJ Stroud to make adjustments. And oh. I think he's going to have a tougher sled in year two. I mean, we'll see what happens, but uh, I, I think it's going to be more difficult for him this year. And, and because of the success they had last year, they're going to play a more difficult schedule this year. So we'll we'll see what happens. Yep. Um, then, depending on how where the Chiefs stand, I mean, Nick, this this could be interesting the way that they, it plays out. I mean, if the Chiefs end up getting the number one seed in the AFC, I mean, they're going to have a 10 days of rest regardless before mm. potentially playing the Denver Broncos in the season finale. If that game matters, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I mean, Chiefs could have a ton of rest for their starters if they potentially they wanted to, if they're in line for the number one seed. Um, I mean, there's a lot to be decided between then and now and then, but uh, it's gonna the week 18 against the Broncos will be in, could be interesting. Yeah, uh, I'm curious. I'll be curious to see where the Chiefs are position wise on Christmas Day against the Steelers, where they're at record wise. 
because like one, we'll see if Russell Wilson's still the quarterback, or we'll see if Justin Fields is the quarterback, or who the heck may be the quarterback at that point where yep. the Steelers are collectively at. And then depending on how that game goes, you're you're hoping ideally the Chiefs have whatever seed locked up either way, no matter what it is, to where Yes, you get that additional rest from Christmas Day, and then the Broncos, you play them when you play them. And they've deliberately set up. I I sneakily, the, the I like to see where, I like to look at each opponent's thing to see where they put them at day-wise. Um, and if I remember correctly, I think they have the Broncos set up. I'm looking through December here. Yeah, they got the Broncos game. The Broncos are going to play the Bengals um, the week before the Chiefs on a Saturday. So then that makes me wonder if they're setting it up to where the Chiefs-Broncos yet again is one of those doubleheader Saturday games. Uh, it's It seems like it's always in the conversation every single year. When they play the Broncos or the yeah. Raiders. Yes. Yeah. You end on the Chargers, there's always a chance on Sunday Night Football. You end with the Raiders or Broncos, there's a chance that that one's going to be one of the Saturday <laughs> doubleheaders on ESPN. Yeah, I mean, and obviously, you know, the, those Saturday games or the Sunday Night game, whichever it may be, I mean, it's going to be something that impacts playoff potential. Or, like it was like a few years ago with the Broncos game, I mean, it was just like the best game that they could put in that slot that didn't affect anything. <laughs> It's the, the Chiefs' outcome really didn't matter that much. The standings, um, Broncos didn't matter, but there weren't any other games that they could plug in there that wasn't going to set up a situation where a team was going to play on Saturday and it was going to dramatically affect somebody else's playoff situation. I mean, that's the difficult thing with the way they do Week 18 now. Um, and the Chiefs are I mean, always going to be at the top of the line anytime that they need to fill a window, and whether it's for a playoff spot or for, whether it's not. So... We'll see what where that game ends up. I, I'm just intrigued because if the Chiefs do have themselves in a position to have the number one seed, I mean, you could be looking at 24 days between that Steelers game and the Chiefs' first playoff game. And that's way too much to rest your starters against the Broncos. I mean, you'd almost have to play them for a little bit just to keep them from getting too rusty. And then if not, I mean, you could have 17 days before a wild card game. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's a great problem to have because if you can have rest for your starters built in with this 10 game, you know, 10 day mini bye week, essentially before the playoffs start, I think it's a great problem to have. Matt, I'm I'm just waiting for your catchphrase at this point because it fits here perfectly <laughs> on this one. You're, but your mileage may vary. There it is. <laughs> well, yeah. I also said that we'll see a couple of times tonight, and this is another one we'll see. Yeah, you hope the Chiefs are in a position where you can entertain both those thoughts and try to figure it out at that point. But, yeah, it was just interesting when you take the totality of the overall schedule. Um, I felt like the NFL evenly gave each partner network-wise enough. You know, like I, th I feel like they gave – Made sure Monday night had a couple a couple spots. They made sure NBC got a handful of spots. They made sure CBS got some golden 30, 325 windows. The Niners, Chiefs, which every single network would have wanted. You you know they made sure that Brady got that one on Fox, and then they made sure Prime got the Black Friday game that they originally were thinking about the year before to begin with. Finally, you're able to test drive that one out. And then Netflix gets the Christmas Day game that they're paying so reportedly $75 million per game for. And I am curious what that'll do numbers-wise, views-wise, purely on Netflix and what ends up coming out of that one. That one is going to be really interesting because you're going to wonder what the, what the structure looks like, what the broadcast looks like, who's going to be play-by-play, -play, who's going to be color, who's going to be the field reporter. Are they going to be NFL Network people? Are they going to just freelance some recognizable names? You know, so I mean, all that's going to be very intriguing. And then the thing that comes out of that, if the numbers on those double headers do incredibly well, where does net where does Netflix try to enter next in the NFL game? Yeah, is there another game they try to be a part of? 
And they got a three-year deal here that gives that guarantees them at least one Christmas Day game in 25 and 26. In 25, Christmas will be on a Thursday. So will they only get the one game and then Amazon gets a night game for Christmas? Certainly looks like how it would be would set up. And then does that mean that Netflix would be back with two games on Friday, Christmas in 2026? Mm. I mean, and how many of those games will the Chiefs play in, Nick? Because my guess right now is all of them. I don't know. <laughs> I think I I think they I think they wanted to make sure that they had the Netflix that for Netflix first game they got the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. I think they wanted to guarantee that. But what they were able to end up guaranteeing them is hey, we'll give you Patrick Mahomes. Since you spent this amount of money, we'll give you Patrick Mahomes. We will give you Lamar Jackson and we will give you CJ Stroud. How about that? You good with that with what you just invested in nearly reportedly $150 million? Yes. So then next year, you try to find a different quarterback matchup, maybe. And then the following year, you find a different quarterback matchup potentially. And you try to give them multiple markets. Because this this is where if I'm if I'm in their shoes, I want to test out different markets where I'm trying to be successful at. So if I'm them down the road, I want the chargers. I want LA of some capacity as my TV market. If I'm paying this amount of money, I want to, I want to see an LA game. And then do you want to see a Philadelphia game? And if I'm them, I'm pushing for Dallas Cowboys. One of those other years too. So I don't know, Matt, we'll see, but I'm saying like you, you're wanting to see a lot of those. I think they're, you know, or maybe Josh Allen or Joe Burrow. And so I just, I don't know. It'll be interesting because like those, those will be more in line with, a you know, with the Thursday, Friday, Christmas in terms of what, what is more, you don't have to move as many puzzle pieces around in the future. If it's a, you know, if it's a Thursday or Friday game, doesn't mean you won't have to move a couple. I just don't think you'll have to move as many. And I will, I mean, I'll give the NFL some props here because one, I mean, I I think this is a pretty balanced schedule for the Chiefs. As tough as yeah. it is, and as many national windows as there are that they've got them juggling around in, I mean, it's not like last year where there's this huge rest deficit that they're going to have. There's going to be some weeks where their opponent's going to have some more rest than they will, but it's not the week stream that it was last year. So they're very fortunate in that regard. I thought that the, the, the Christmas day scheduling solution was very creative. I mean, mm-hmm. um, they could have, they could have very well have gone very simple with it being four teams from all the same division or two teams from two divisions, but the way they were able to get a, a South team, two North teams and a West team. I mean, that was pretty creative. I do see them there being some limitations and difficulties on this. I mean, this year, for instance, I mean, you couldn't have a West Coast team playing in this Christmas Day game because that would just be absolutely cruel and unusual punishment. No. Um, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't happen, you know, when it's on a Thursday or a Friday at Christmas. So that's this, this is the one, you know, blip in the radar. Probably when Christmas is on a Tuesday, we'll also see some weirdness because that's probably when the Chiefs will next play on a Tuesday will be when they have, when Christmas falls on a Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, this, this is a, I mean, a very creative schedule and I think it's pretty fair for the Chiefs, even though they do have them running all over the place, uh, trying to dress up the ratings and every way they can. Yeah. And something else I think may come, come from this down the road was if they do ever get to an 18 game schedule, I think they're slowly setting this up to where they can put a bye week in one of those weeks and get whoever the heck they want with equal rest ahead of that Christmas game. Yeah, I already got that that week that they've uh, bumped in to bump the Super Bowl until mid February. So, so we get that that President's Day week and holiday, Nick. Oh yeah, that's a, that's the in the end game. That's that's the smart play to go about it. Is that you have the Super Bowl and President's Day the following day? Make your make your holiday plans right now for February for Valentine's Day, twenty seventeen. <laughs> twenty seventeen, so, going back so in the this, future. 2017 2027 sorry <laughs> things like that happen to my my brain after midnight we all know that don't worry that's fine i i was just gonna say if if we do go back in time can we go get one of those sports almanacs like marty mcfly did because <laughs> i would like exactly. to make some money off that matt 
Although I don't think if you're the Chiefs, you really want to go back to 2017, do you? I mean, you're pretty happy with what what happens already, right? No, I want to go back to get the almanac and come back in. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, Matt. (laughs) I know. I'm following you. All right. Any final conclusions, Nick, that you want to uh, deliver on the schedule? No, I think we've parting thoughts. I think we've exhausted almost everything that we can on this one. I I just, I will say the only thing is I I wish the buy was later in the year. That's the only thing that I kind of wish more than anything else would really, I would have loved to have seen that anywhere between November, the November 4th week or the November 10th week and moved, move one of those games up to October there. I think that would have been a lot more beneficial to, to the chiefs, but Hey, trying to three Pete and they'll, uh, the, I think the league wants to. Uh, I think I personally think I don't think the league did this to be completely against the Chiefs. No, but I also don't think they wanted to make it look like they're quote unquote doing any favors for them. No, now, I mean this should be. I mean for for the purposes it's fulfilling, which is to highlight the Chiefs on a potential Super Bowl three peat. It's doing it. I think it's going to do its job. Yep, agreed. Well, hopefully you are all not uh, scheduled out yet because we've got one more podcast that's going to touch on the NFL schedule and the Chiefs coming up on Sunday. I'm really looking forward to this because we are going to get to talk to Charlotte Carey uh, from the NFL front office that's uh, in the department that puts together the schedule and the broadcast schedules and all of that and is going to answer some of our questions and talk about some of the topics about just how the, the nuts and bolts and how the sausage is made of how you build the schedule with the Chiefs and how this all came to be and uh, really looking forward to it because we're going to be able to kind of get some answers that, you know, Nick and I have had some things about some things for a while and help you explain how the, everything comes together and why the NFL makes some of the decisions that it does. I think it's going to be an absolute blast. Uh, I've seen some interviews that Charlotte has done and she's just absolutely whiz. She knows her stuff, so it is going to be a lot of fun. I uh, hope you will join us. That will be out on Sunday. Um, obviously we'll have the Q and a next Tuesday on chiefs digest YouTube channel. Nick, I think, I think that's it. Any, any, anything else? Yeah. And if you're curious, I mean, Charlotte, uh, Charlotte Carey was, uh, she's the NFL director of broadcasting and she was on good morning football. Uh, the show that they had ahead of the, the schedule release. And she, she was on there and I got to watch that interview really enjoyed what she had to say. And it's just, it's always fascinating to hear people that have to be involved in that as as their profession, just kind of their thought process and what they have to do and all the puzzle pieces they have to put together. Cause we may look at it from a lens of chiefs perspective. They have to look at it from a lens of making sure everything is good for all 272 games. And on top of it, make sure that each partner uh, network wise or streaming wise gets a fair shake and nobody doesn't get Patrick Mahomes or the Dallas Cowboys or, you know, one of the must see teams. It is very difficult to make all 32 teams and all the broadcast partners and everybody involved all marginally happy. You can't make them all happy. You're probably probably better off if if, if nobody is too happy and nobody's too mad. That's the best you can hope for. Right. (laughs) Well, with that, we will sign off for tonight. I hope you enjoyed the discussion, and we'll be back on Sunday with the discussion with Charlotte Carey. And until next time... I bid you adieu. (laughs) You've been listening to 41 is the mic presented by KSHB 41, your home of the Chiefs and Chiefs Digest.